There is an alternative way to categorize variables that shows up in nursing textbooks and criminal justice textbooks and various other places. So we want to expose you to these definitions, but we're not going to do too much with them in Math 133. So there are the levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal being the weakest and ratio being the strongest. So if you want to think of it on, on a spectrum here, this is the strongest down here the most meaningful, the most useful for calculations. And up here is the weakest. You can't do many calculations with it at all. Matter of fact, hardly anything, <laughs> right? So the nominal is values of the variable name, label, and categorize the data, but you cannot arrange it in a ranked order. Now, ranking is important. Ranking is not alphabetizing. So let me just write that, alphabetizing does not count as rank or even putting it in numerical order does not necessarily count as rank rank means somebody's better than somebody else rank means first second third i can tell who's better than whom right that cannot happen with nominal data so alphabetizing and actually numerical order doesn't necessarily count as rank. Rank is something very specific, like gold, silver, bronze. That's a rank. Ordinal, for example, is that, right? So ordinal is first, second, third, but that's about it. So ordinal is, um, I'll just put dot, 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 or gold, silver, bronze, if we're talking about the Olympics, for example. That's ordinal. It has an order that can be ranked, but that's about it, right? There's not much else going on there. So you can't do other meaningful calculations. So nominal really has almost no calculations at all. Um, most that you can do is find the most frequent one, and that's about it. So no calculations at all on nominal, no real calculations on ordinal, but ordinal has a ranked order. Now, if you're comparing to qualitative, quantitative, these two are the qualitative. They tend to be words, categories. They're the qualitative. Sorry, I had to put that over here. <laughs> qualitative. And I put that right down here. Qualitative breaks into nominal and ordinal, right? So if you're looking at words and categories, if they cannot be ranked, that's nominal. If they can be ranked, like gold, silver, bronze, that's ordinal, right? So this would be your gold, silver, bronze. That's ordinal. Okay. Now, interval and ratio are numbers, so they are the quantitative group. So if you're looking at interval and ratio, just choosing a pen here, I think I'll stick with red. These two are numbers, they're quantitative. So if you can do meaningful calculations, numbers with meaningful calculations, you can actually have numbers up here, but they'd be numbers you cannot do meaningful calculations from. So that would be the difference between them. So for example, your social security number, it's a number, but it's nominal, right? It doesn't really mean anything. You cannot do a meaningful calculation, right? Because it's qualitative, nominal and ordinal are qualitative, no meaningful calculations. Whereas interval and ratio are all either discrete or continuous, right? So quantitative is interval and ratio. Now, there's one exception to that. Um, it's not really a great exception, but it's an exception, which is number ranking. And it's a rare exception. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. Actually, I don't know how rare it is. It, it, it actually happens all the time. Um, let me give you an example. At the end of the semester, you're asked to rate your professors at the college on a variety of categories. And they'll say, you know, give them a score from one to five, right? So if they have that number ranking or like uh, movies, you know, one star to five star, one star, two star, three star, four star, five star, that's ordinal. Because you don't know how much bigger a five star is than a four star. So one would argue that the calculations are not meaningful. However, um, and any statistician will tell you that, that 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 ordinal is actually qualitative. But being realistic with you 
administrators the worldwide are constantly finding averages of these numbers. They're adding them up and dividing and, and all that stuff. So, I mean, I've had many college administrators say, oh, you have an average of 4.2 on this, you know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean anything. Um, they shouldn't be doing that, but they do. So it's an exception that's commonly accepted in practice, but statisticians, it just makes their skin crawl because it's not, it's not real. It shouldn't be there, um, but it is in, in real life. So it's an exception that's um, based on real life. So rate my professor, rate this movie, you know, give us a ranking from one to 10, that kind of thing. So when you do numerical ranking, they will often treat it like it's continuous and it's me like it's discrete and quantitative. It is not, but that's the way they will treat it. It's called a Likert scale. L-I-K-E-R-T, right? So just be aware of that exception. We will do the same. We will say that that's ordinal and it's discrete and continuous and um, discrete and quantitative, excuse me. You cannot be both discrete and continuous at the same time. You're either discrete or you're continuous. But um, we will say that it's quantitative, but it isn't. Now, interval and ratio, you'll notice they're right down there because interval and ratio are all the numbers. So what's the difference between the two? Well, interval data can be negative. So zeros are not absolute in interval data. So they're numbers, but they can have negatives. So this is only, so interval is positive or negative are possible. But other than that, it's numbers that you can do meaningful calculations from, right? So the key is there that can be negative. And you have a scale, right? You know that four is bigger than three and you know exactly by how much. Ratio is only positive because the zeros are absolute. You cannot get any negative numbers. So that's the best to work with. Only positive is possible. All right, so let's go down and look at the exact same patient statistics, patient data that we were gathering and figure out how it relates to nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. All right, so your name. Your name is rather obviously nominal. <laughs> There's no ranking, it's a word, right? So since it's a word, you know, Alana in my case, that's either nominal or ordinal and you cannot rank names. You know, it's not like A names are better than S names. Although I have an A name and my husband has an S name. So um, it'd be great if we if we could, but that does not work that way. Now patient number is a little bit of a trick because you're thinking, oh, your number of 326, right? Ah, but that 326 does not have an order to it. It's not like patient 326 is better than patient 327. It's just the number they were assigned. It's like social security number. So this is actually N, even though it's a number, it's nominal. You can't really do anything with it, right? Other than put them in an order, right? That's it. And by that, I mean, not a ranked order. I mean, numerical order that doesn't mean anything. All right. The year you were born, man, that's a little bit of a trick. The year calendar year is always considered to be interval, even though nobody could have been born unless they were magical, right? The year you were born is interval. And it's because negative years are possible if you're talking about BCE, right? So BCE are the negative years, AD are the positive years. Now I know nobody was born in BCE unless they, you know, well, or Doctor Who or something like that. But unless you have a time machine, that's not going to be possible. However, we just always treat years, calendar years as intervals. So that would be another thing, good thing to note up here. We'll make a little note calendar year, you know, to 2020 and so on, are always interval. That's just how it is. All right. Now, if you're a patient coming in and I ask you, did you have the flu vaccine last year? You would answer yes or no, right? I realized I wanted to color code these, so I'm going to go green for interval. There we go. So yes or no is a nominal answer, right? So it's either yes or it's no. We can't really rank them. There's only really two of them. I mean, I guess I could make a value judgment that I think yes is better than no, but that's not quite the same thing as ordinal. It's not like first, second, third. So this is nominal. Now your body temperature. Mm. Body temperature is interesting. 
because temperature in degrees Fahrenheit hmm, can have negative values, right? Because degrees Fahrenheit has, well, it's zero is very, very cold. <laughs> it's the coldest it was on the mountain of the guy that thought of it, Fahrenheit. Um, so he went up to this mountain near him and he said that the coldest temperature that mountain reached, I'll call that zero. So that's what he did. But it's not like you can't get colder than that. You can get negatives, right? So degrees Fahrenheit is actually interval, right? So is degrees Celsius. As a matter of fact, I could put both of these. Degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius are always interval, right? So degrees centigrade and degrees Fahrenheit. Ratio is actually Kelvin. I'm going to put the little degree symbol, even though every physicist would cringe at me because it's not really a degree, but nevertheless, Kelvin has an absolute zero. So if you've ever heard of degrees Kelvin in a science class, that's ratio. But Fahrenheit and Celsius are both always interval, always. Interesting, huh? All right, so interval for this one. Degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius are always interval or centigrade, depending on what country you're coming from. Blood pressure. Well, blood pressure has an absolute zero, right? You're dead. You have no blood pressure, right? So it's millimeters of mercury, right? So that doesn't have negative values. You can't have negative millimeters of mercury, whereas you can with degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll give that one an R. All right, now your shoe size. Well, shoe size is a little weird because you can tell that a person with a seven shoe is bigger than a person with a six shoe. But you can't really tell by how much. It's not like you can do a lot of meaningful calculations with it. So that's a little weird. I would say it's probably falling also into this exception category where it's ordinal, but it's really falling into the discrete quantitative side of the house. So I guess when I said that exception was rare, I kind of lied. <laughs> it's really not as rare as we would like it to be. So shoe size is a little strange. Um, so it's really falling under this because we said it was discrete and it is, right? We can do a little bit with it, but mathematically it's a little bit hard to work with. So that's falling more under the ordinal side. Right, so it's in this. So actually we could add shoe size into here. So number ranking like one, two, three, four, five, and we can add shoe size as an example. Now the length of foot, uh, that's a whole other thing. The length of your foot is something you measure, right? With inches and so on. You obviously cannot have a negative length of foot that doesn't exist. So that means that that's ratio, right? Because negative is impossible. All right, now service rating fair, good, and so on. Again, that's ordinal, right? You know that fair is better than poor, but you don't know by how much. There's no way to do a meaningful calculation in that. So that's ordinal. And then the pain level, I already mentioned up above. Pain level is this exception again. So you could put shoe size in here. You could put pain level in here. They're numbers but they're numbers that's a little hard to do a meaningful calculation of, right? So pain level and shoe size are in here. I mean, you can do some calculations with shoe size, you know, so my sister has a size 11 shoe, I have a size 10 shoe. So the average between us is a 10 and a half, right? You can do that, but it's a little strange otherwise, right? So those three, oh, sorry, I knocked my camera. Those three are all ordinal. Weight. Okay, so your weight has to be ratio. You cannot go to negative amounts of weight, right? There's, there is no such thing. Moreover, um, the scale pounds, there is no such thing as negative pounds. Now you think, I know what you're thinking. Well, I can't be negative years old either. True. Um, that's not quite the same thing though. Year, just year is interval. It just is right. Those, those two types of scales are interval. Interval is a pretty rare thing. We don't run into it too much in our particular course. So that's right ratio weight ah but weight gain or loss because weight itself is only positive i'm sorry to say <laughs> right but how much weight you've gained or lost ah you could lose negative or gain positive negative or positive means it's interval and then age no matter how you count it age is ratio right so your age is ratio, whether you round it or not. 
Now, if you want to say difference in age between siblings, uh, that could be positive or negative. Let me give you another example. So difference in age between, how about spouses? So you have two people that are married, the difference in their age, well, that difference could be positive or it could be negative, which makes it integral. Again, interval is not something we work with. Actually, none of these, we work with the data. We don't really work with nominal ordinal interval ratio very much, but it does show up in other books and other courses. So this way you've kind of seen them and had familiarized yourself with the definitions.